Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you kidnapping romance recommendations. So these are romances where someone in the couple kidnaps the other person and they end up falling in love. I want to show off my shirt for a second because it totally fits this video. So a lot of romances by Ruby Dixon, the IPB series, are kidnapping romances. I'm going to be mentioning one of them today because the whole video could be about IPB. So I wanted to show off my shirt. Mm. This one says, mm. take me to Not Hoth. Look at that. It's so cute. I just want to show it off because Monica got that for me, I believe last year. Please go check out Monica. I'm going to link her down below. She uh, recently started her channel and I just love her. She was so sweet and got this shirt for me. And I just have to shout her out every time I wear it because it was so thoughtful. And um, I thought it was the perfect fit for today's video. And also if you hear a ball bouncing, it's because um, there's a certain ball obsessed boy next to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so IPB, we gotta talk about IPB. So a lot of Ruby Dixon's books um, have this trope in it. And so that might be why I'm a sucker for it. So I'm just gonna be mentioning one of them today. I'm restraining myself, okay? And that one is one of my favorites in the series, which is Barbarian Mine. I recently got this one. This is book four in the series in the newer edition. I also have the older one. I love both of them. They're iconic. So um, this one is about Harlow and Rook. If you don't know what the Ice Planet Barbarian series is about, it's about blue aliens who have cooies in their body, which are like symbiotes that indicate and hum to them whenever their mate or lifelong partner is near. And so each book in the series is about a human woman who has crashed on this planet and um, her finding her mate with one of these blue aliens on the planet, not Hoth. <laughs> Harlow gets kidnapped in one of the previous books in the series. Like people are freaking out, like where did Harlow go? Why is she missing? What's going on? So this is the book about what happened to Harlow. Um, she is out wandering the snow, like trying to find something and she gets basically hit over the head with a rock <laughs> by Rook and he ends up kidnapping her. So the Sakui blue aliens in here, they're all in the same group. They all live together. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone lives in the same cave. But Rook in here is someone no one knows about. He's a Sakui alien who lives all on his own in the wilderness. He doesn't know that there are other creatures out there on the planet. He's been there all by himself ever since his dad died. It was just him and his dad living together. His dad died and now he's living all by himself. He doesn't know language. He can't communicate with people and he doesn't know what a Kui is. And so when he sees this woman and his body starts to like hum, his Kui starts going off. He's like, what is this? What is going on? So what does Rook decide to do? Hit the woman on the head with a rock and kidnap her. And so a lot of this book is a language barrier trope. Um, Harlow and Rook do not speak the same language and she's trying to teach him English and trying to figure out how to live on this planet with this new alien man she's never met before. Harlow in here is also going through some stuff in and of itself. Um, she is terrified of an illness coming back and um, she doesn't really know how to communicate that with Rook. But I just love Rook. He's such a sweet, sweet boy. It doesn't matter that he hit her over the head with a rock and took her. Like, I still love him. <laughs> Another alien one is Treasure of the Abyss by Tiffany Roberts. Look at this new cover. They're revamping. They're redoing all of the covers in the series and I'm totally for it. These are so beautiful. I love them. They're artists for their books. So talented. This is a tentacle romance. If you can see by the cover, a Kraken romance. His name is Jax and he is kind of like the outcast not really he's a self-proclaimed outcast with his other kraken people he likes to keep by himself and so one day when he's exploring the ocean he ends up across macy who's in this rowboat with this man little does he know that macy is a human woman who is on this boat with this man who is about to propose to her she knows he's going to propose and She's gonna say yes, even though she doesn't want to because that is what her family expects of her. But then there's a storm that comes and the boat capsizes and Jax ends up saving her, but then kidnaps her and takes her to his cave and keeps her there. And she is adamant of returning. She's like, let me out right now. I need to go back to my family. And he's like, but you're mine. Like, what do you mean? No. <laughs> this world was very interesting because this does take place on an alien world um, where neither species are native to the planet, which is so cool. So like humans are settlers on the planet and Jax's people are as well. But the humans know nothing about these kraken that live in the ocean. And so this book is about Jax keeping this woman in, in, in a cave that 
the only entrance is through the water, you know? So she would have to swim to get out. And I think she doesn't know how to swim. And then he has to keep her a secret from his other Kraken people because uh, they're not supposed to um, mate with humans and stuff. So this one was kind of forbidden and very tentacly. And I really enjoyed this one. A contemporary one is Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. This is book two in the Brutal Birthright series, but you can read this one as a standalone. All you need to know before this is Miko, our hero in here. He has an adoptive father the head of the Polish mafia and he ends up getting killed by Nessa's brother and so that happened in book one and so Miko is out for revenge he's now the leader of the Polish mafia so he decides to kidnap the guy who killed his dad's sister so that is Nessa so this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling as well so <laughs> I feel like any Beauty and the Beast retelling you're gonna get is kind of like kidnapping us but Nico ends up kidnapping Nessa takes her to his mansion that he lives in and keeps her there. He fully expects to torture or kill her, but then when he gets to know her, he's like, I could never harm this angel. Like she is literally an angel and he doesn't want to care for her. He does not. That's the last thing he wants to do, but he just cannot help himself because Nessa is such a beauty inside and out. Um, Nessa's also a dancer, so you see on the cover, she's like wearing a ballerina's outfit and she has like shackles on because she is kidnapped. Um, so dance is incorporated a lot in this book and this one was just so good so good because they're both trying to like deal with their feelings in here because Miko's like I can't fall in love with this woman her brother killed my dad like no and Nessa's like I can't fall for the guy who kidnapped me like what what does that say about me so there's a lot of internal conflict as well as external conflict between these two and it made for an amazing read a fantasy romance I just love is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher this kidnapping romance the kidnapping aspect in here top notch and it led for some like hilarity and drama between these two characters this takes place on a fantasy world this is a fantasy romance so cat in here is a kingmaker which is a magical being that exists once every 200 years and they are a hot commodity the kingmaker has a lot of magical powers they're very coveted powers so one of them is being able to detect when someone is lying so cat has dealt with a lot in her life she's currently on the run and disguising herself as a soothsayer in this traveling circus Griffin ends up across her in the circus and right when he sees her, he knows exactly who and what she is. And guess what he decides to do? Kidnap her and take her to his kingdom so he can further strengthen his sister who he put on the throne in his kingdom. Pat and Griffin are everything. If you want to read about an epic bantering relationship, enemies to lovers, you have to pick this one up. They have to go on a journey back to his kingdom. And so she is chained to him, chained to him for the majority of this trek. And it leads to some very interesting situations. <laughs> I'm shocked that more people haven't picked this one up because it is just fantastic. And the bantering relationship between these two characters, epic. The romance is epic. The fantasy world is beautiful. Like, more people need to pick this one up. This is my favorite kidnapping romances because they're literally chained together. Like it is so good. <laughs> Another fantasy one is Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. This one's about Jolene and Azarion. Azarion in here is a gladiator slave. He is forced to fight people to the death all the time. And so he's been this gladiator slave for this evil empire for years. Once a year in the empire, they take women, one woman from every village and sacrifices them on a pyre in front of everyone once a year. Jolene is one of the women that is picked, but no one knows that she has magical like firepower and um, magic was outlawed in the empire years ago and anyone who has magical powers will be, you know, but she has another magical power. She's able to glamor herself as someone else. And so for the past like five years, she has glamored herself to look like another woman. So no one from her village will actually be burned at the stake and die. So every year for the past five years, she has glamored herself as a new woman to be sacrificed on the stake. No one's been able to notice that she has come every single year until Azarion. Azarion is able to look past her glamor at one point. It's like, you've been here before. I have seen you. What is going on? And so then he figures out what she can do, who she is. And he's like, this is the perfect opportunity for me to get out of here. So he uses Jolene to escape his enslavement and ends up kidnapping her as a thank you, kidnaps her to take him back to his kingdom so he can be put back on the throne. We have another traveling romance where they're traveling together to go somewhere, but she's kidnapped. <laughs> another bantering enemies to lovers relationship. And uh, 
I feel like fantasy romance is just like an amazing setting for a good kidnapping romance and then they have to travel together while one of them's kidnapped. I love it. For paranormal romance, um, the Immortals After Dark series has a lot of kidnapping romances, but I'm just gonna mention two. First one is the first book in the series, which is A Hunger Like No Other. This is a romance between Lachlan and Emmeline. Lachlan in here is a Lyge, which is basically like a werewolf. He's able to shift into like his werewolf form or wolf form, but he has been kidnapped by vampires for years. He's lived underground, put in chains, basically tortured by vampires for years. And so while he's underground, he can kind of smell things from up above through like the vents and everything. So he is being tortured one day in this vampire den and he's able to scent his mate. He's like, oh my gosh, I have to get out of here. What if her scent goes away and I can't find her? Like I need to get out of here now to find my mate. So he ends up breaking his own leg, breaking his own leg to go and get out of the chains and go find his mate. He ends up finding her to be severely disappointed <laughs> that his mate is part vampire. And he is so angry. He's so mad. He's like, vampires have tortured me for years. Why has fate deemed this little woman who's part vampire to be my mate? And so he's so angry, but he can't help but be totally obsessed with her because that's his fate of mate. So what does he do? He kidnaps her. Emmeline in here is very sheltered and hasn't really experienced a lot in life. And so she's she's very shocked um, when this Lyge comes up to her and is like, you're my mate, how is this possible? And he's very upset with her um, when she did nothing wrong. <laughs> and so it's about the two of them obviously falling for each other, but they don't like the other like species or whatever. And she's kind of scared of him a little bit. So this one I feel like is a great start to this amazing paranormal romance but this is a great start to this amazing paranormal romance series a lot of books of this series have this trope like ipb so i am obsessed with it then the most recent book in the series which is book number 18 monroe also has this trope i don't want to say too much because this is book number 18 and you've met one of the characters in like the previous books in the series so monroe is also a like so like Lachlan from book one. He has been taken by some evil like scientist people who want to experiment on him in his wolf form, but he won't shift into his Lyca form. But then they end up going through time and figure out figuring out who his mate is. They have to go back in time, I think to like around the 1930s, 1920s and pulls her, plucks her out from time and brings her to him. Her name is Ren, but then they kill her right in front of him. And he is devastated and he's made it his life mission to go back in time to save his mate from being taken again and to make her his. Um, so he does just that. He goes back in time, there's time travel in here, to go and find Ren and kidnaps her from her year and brings her back to his, <laughs> or, or forward to his, <laughs> I can say that. Sorry, time travel is kind of finicky to talk about. Like, <laughs> it's very weird. That's all I'm gonna say. He does kidnap her from her time and brings her to our time. So it's very, very interesting. Next are two books a part of the same series. So this is book number uh, four and book number five, a part of the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series by Honey Phillips. So the first one being Rakar. This isn't the first book in the series, but the first one I'm going to mention. This is book number four in the series. Um, but if you don't know what the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers musical is, I recommend looking it up. You read about in book one of this series that our heroine ends up moving in with these aliens, uh, these seven aliens, because she marries one of them. And one night she decides to tell this story about how this ragtag group of men who live together decide to go and kidnap women from a neighboring village to marry them. And they're like, oh my gosh, so that's how we get human women to be our wives. We have to go kidnap them. <laughs> so a lot of the books in the series is about a alien going to kidnap a human woman to make her, <laughs> to make her his wife. So Drakkar in here is one of those. He goes to, flies to a nearby village and saves this woman from a precarious situation, an abusive situation. Her baby daddy is, um, not the nicest whatsoever. So he saves her from the situation and her baby and kidnaps them and takes them to um, his cave and they live together and they end up falling in love. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. But these books are so quick and fun. They're under one, they're under like 150 pages and they're really good alien romances that I just really, really love. And so Endark is another one you get to read about the hero of this book kidnapping the heroine from the village but this one has like a fate of mate aspect to it um he is able to like 
hulk out a little bit um like get bigger and everything in his like beast form um when he is uh quick to anger and then also he's in danger of being in his like beast form forever if he's not able to find his mate and so he's very happy when he ends up finding out that his fated mate is the one of the women in the village and he ends up like knocking her out and um kidnapping her and taking him to and taking her to his cabin but he's in for a shock when she wakes up and she's like where's my brother i don't care if you kidnapped me did you take like where is my brother and he's like you have a brother i have no idea like i'll go find him and he's like so shocked he's like i am so dumb i didn't even think about whether this whether or not this woman had like family i was just so set on like taking what's mine that he didn't stop to think about if she had family she had to take care of and that's all i'm gonna leave you with that one but this series is really good it's like chock full of kidnapping romances <laughs> and the last one that i love to mention is a historical romance this is wicked designs by lauren smith this is the first book in her uh league of rogues series our direct in here he is the duke of essex decides to kidnap miss emily parr because her uncle who's her guardian owes him quite a large sum so he decides to kidnap his niece in order to get to said sum but then the kidnapping does not go according to plan we ends up falling in love with <laughs> the woman he kidnapped and there's a lot going on in here too because the heroine is not happy that she's being kidnapped but she sees the positivity in it at the same time because that means that she might not have to marry this gross man that her uncle was gonna like set her up with but she's also telling godrick like do you realize by kidnapping me you ruined me i have no no possibility of having like a good marriage like ever because you can me and you ruined me like you have to marry me and he's like i'm not gonna marry you i'm, I'm not marrying anyone no no and she's like you are freaking marrying me because you ruined my life <laughs> so i just love how headstrong both of these characters were this made for a very entertaining historical romance anyways there you have it those were 10 kidnapping romances for you please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me the chain emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.